Well, hello. I'm Lyndall Ormsby, and I'm representing the uh, Environmental Water Resources uh, Institute uh, Water Distribution Systems Analysis History Project. And uh, the purpose of our uh, project and our task committee is to go back and document the history of uh, the development of water distribution systems analysis. Uh, and as part of that, we're actually conducting a bunch of interviews with uh, researchers, scientists, some of the initial uh, pioneers in the field, uh, and trying to document uh, their contributions, trying to get uh, antidotes from their experiences, and so on. And so today we're actually interviewing Dr. Don Wood. Dr. Wood is an uh, emeritus professor at the University of Kentucky, uh, although he's currently retired and living in Texas. And uh, Don was actually involved in the development of uh, algorithms for both uh, steady state analysis as well as transient analysis with regard to water distribution systems. Uh, he was also the uh, author and original developer of a uh, software called KY Pipe that uh, has been used all over the world and is still actually uh, in use. And personally, I had the great fortune of uh, having Dr. Wood as a professor when I was an undergraduate student at the University of Kentucky. Uh, I actually took a hydraulics course with him that we looked at a water distribution analysis. We actually used his uh, software and uh, really from that point on I was kind of hooked in the, uh, the area of uh, network analysis. Uh, I was then fortunate in uh, 1983 uh, to come back on the faculty at the University of Kentucky and thus started uh, really a, a multi-decade partnership uh, with Dr. Wood uh, in looking at network analysis problems and expanding some of the capabilities and so on of KY Pipe. So, uh, it's a real privilege for me to actually uh, interview uh, really my, my main mentor in this area, uh, Don Wood. And so this interview today is actually being uh, conducted on May 15th, uh, 2015 uh, in the city of Dallas, Texas. Uh, well, Dr. Wood, I noticed in preparing for this interview today that uh, you got all three of your degrees at Carnegie uh, Tech, uh, which I guess now is Carnegie Mellon. Uh, how did you end up uh, going to, to Carnegie Mellon? Well, when I graduated from high school, I actually went to Penn State okay. uh, for one year. Uh, it was a very good school, but quite overwhelming. My best friend went to Carnegie Tech, and uh, uh, after hearing about it and knowing more about it, I switched to Carnegie Tech, and it, of course, is a very, uh, uh, a very good school, and I ended up getting uh, my bachelor's, master's, and Ph.D. Okay. Well, I know uh, a lot of people, when they, when they think of uh, you and probably KY Pipe, they think of steady state analysis, but I think what a lot of people might be surprised is that really your, your master's and your Ph.D. work were really focusing on transient analysis, if, if, if I'm correct, and I think there was uh, a Dr. Stelson that was kind of an instrumental in maybe kind of getting you interested in that. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that happened? Well, in my senior year, uh, I had Dr. Stelson for a, a course in hydraulics, uh, Dr. Selson was only 28, but he was at that time chairman of the department, so he was a brilliant fellow who went on to become a executive president or vice president at Georgia Tech and at Hong Kong University. Well, anyhow, he was lecturing on hydraulics, and he gave, me a, gave us about a 10-minute lecture on what happens when you close a valve in a pipeline. He described that you close the valve and a pressure wave is generated, it travels down the pipe at sonic speed. It's much like a sound wave. And uh, he also said when it got to a junction, he, he described a T-junction, uh, if the pipes were all of equal size, you would get the, uh, a wave transmitted down the straight through leg and down the 90-degree uh, uh, leg uh, of the same magnitude. And I remember at the time thinking, well, uh, I was questioning that in my mind because I was thinking that if uh, someone hollered in the end of a pipe, and someone was listening uh, at the other end uh, on a straight through run and somebody was listening on the 90 degree run that the straight through run would would hear better and uh, that interested me and so three years later when I was doing PhD research I chose to do research on uh, the reflection and transmission of pressure waves uh, through junctions and uh, that's how it all got started with this short lecture short period of a lecture from uh, Dr. Stelson. Okay, so so those little lectures are, uh, things you hear in lectures uh, it can basically change your whole life, it sounds like, occasionally. Well, it, it did, and uh, 
uh, I might allude to this again, but it was just 10 minutes. That's all the formal training I had in transient flow. Wow. And I was sort of, I think in retrospect, that was a very good thing because I th was thinking about it in terms of pressure waves. Right. And uh, uh, we built on that over the years. Okay. Well, I noticed after you graduated from uh, Carnegie Tech, uh, you took a position at Clemson. You were there for a year, and then you transferred to Duke. Uh, how, did, how did that transpire? Well, Duke was actually my first choice, and they had no openings. Okay. Uh, so I uh, had a, opportunities to go to several schools. I went to Clemson, and then Duke, uh, an opening developed at Duke, and they contacted me and uh, offered me the position, so I went to Duke. Okay. Uh, and I also might say they had a Robert Trent Jones golf course, which uh, influenced <laughs> me a little bit, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, one of the other things, uh, one of the other things that uh, intrigued me um, was while you were at Duke, I think you got a faculty fellowship with NASA. Uh, and I, how did that happen? Well, uh, they were offering uh, fellowships to professors of uh, academics, and I accepted one at Lewis Research Center. Okay. And uh, I went up there, and there they were working on uh, transient problems in the propellant feed lines. This was in the early days, in the, or you know, mid 1960s, and they had two uh, serious problems. One called chugging, uh, which was caused by uh, the f the piping system being shaken uh, by the engines, and uh, would cause transients in the system, which would cause additional transients in the uh, in the thrust. Okay. And the other was called pogo, which was a very similar problem, and they were losing rockets on both of these. So I was actually. Uh, uh, worked with them and developed some of the first uh, software uh, for transient analysis in these piping systems. Okay. Now, uh, somehow that translated at you uh, applying for the uh, the NASA astronaut program. I mean, how did that come about? Well, it was just back when, in the early days when it was just very exciting to think about it. And they started the first science astronaut program in 66, I think. Okay. And uh, you had to have a PhD, so I was qualified and I was quite fit and uh, got quite excited and did apply. I think there was about 1,000 applicants, and I got down to the final 30, and uh, they put us through all sort of gruesome things, and <laughs> it was a very interesting experience. So uh, what, what are some, uh, some of the stories maybe you can remember about some of those experiences? Anything that stands out in particular? Well, uh, we went through some uh, zero-G dives in fighter jets, and that was kind of frightening. A few people <laughs> pulled the, uh, the uh, release on their, on their uh, seats, and that, that wasn't uh, the right thing to do at all. <laughs> oh, no. Well, did you actually get to uh, meet some of the, uh, I guess, what then became sort of... Uh, famous astronauts at the time? or Oh yeah, I did, and I met Alan Shepard. In fact, he called me uh, to give me the uh, word about the, the uh, decision on the program. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that was very, very uh, exciting. Uh, in retrospect, I had almost decided that I would rather stay and profess than do this, but uh, I wasn't one of the 15 selected, so okay. I All didn't right. have to make that decision. Gotcha. Well, um, even though you didn't become an astronaut, obviously it looks like NASA uh, and some of the relationships you had there impacted some of your research. Uh, how, how did that lead to some of the other research that you did in particular, sort of looking at transients and so on? Well, uh, I, I uh, worked on the influence of, of motion of lines on fluid transients, which was the problem NASA had. Right. Their big problem was that they couldn't keep their pipelines from shaking. And so I, I had uh, some grants from uh, uh, several, several agencies to do studies on the influence or the effect of the motion of the pipelines on the fluid transients. Okay. Now, as I recall, back you know in the, in the '60s, when people were looking at transients, uh, they were they were using some numerical techniques like the method of characteristics, which was very cumbersome, very intensive computationally. Uh, but you kind of stumbled onto or came up with uh, something, I guess, that's kind of been called the wave plan method, that uh, essentially was given the same results, but computationally was much more efficient. How did that all come about? Well, again, I, I've, I've been forever grateful for the 10 minute lecture I got uh, from Dr. Stelson talking about the pressure waves being generated where there's a valve closing and being reflected and transmitted. Uh, this 
was my perspective of transient flow, and that was uh, the only formal education I had. And so uh, when I went to NASA, this, uh, you know, looking at transients in terms of waves generated at a source of a disturbance and the effects of these waves at junctions and at pumps and at valves, this could be handled quite, quite readily with uh, using the Joukowsky equation, which is the relationship between velocity change and pressure change and uh, the characteristics of the components. And so uh, that was uh, the approach I used when I was with NASA, and uh, it provides accurate and very efficient and intuitive solutions. Okay. Well, at, at some point you decided to leave Duke and uh, come to UK, which uh, I'm very fortunate uh, that that happened. Uh, who knows what would have happened in my career if you didn't show up at UK. But what, what caused you to leave, it, uh, leave Duke and, and come over to UK? Well, I had been driven through Kentucky, I think, after my junior year in college when I was heading down to Louisiana to a summer job. And anyhow, I was very impressed with the bluegrass. And uh, at the time, UK was uh, expanding its program, working very hard to build up research and PhD. And, and uh, I looked into that, and uh, they gave me a very good opportunity. So I went there and never had any regrets or looked back. All right, so you went to UK, you'd been doing all this research and transient analysis, uh, but then you started getting some uh, focus on steady state analysis, which I guess kind of served as the precursor for KY pipe. What kind of uh, served as the uh, impetus or the stimulus to start looking at steady state analysis? Well, I was uh, asked to join a team of, of engineers and, and medical folks uh, working on a bioengineering or biomedical project on shock. And uh, part of that was looking at the blood flow during uh, shock, the, uh, the capillaries uh, uh, constrict. And uh, so we were looking at the flow through uh, uh, the capillaries. And these are large networks of, of pipes or tubes. And, uh, of course, this was laminar flow, so the, uh, the uh, pressure drops were uh, basically linear with flow. And so we ended up with a large set of equations that we could solve simultaneous linear equations. Well, uh, once that was done, I was very interested, of course, in, in the flow of, of turbulent flow, like water, and uh, so I, I uh, looked at modifying the equations to linearize them uh, and iteratively solve them for steady-state flow, and that's the precursor of KY pipe. Okay. I know. Uh, I, I guess one of your early PhD students was Carl Charles, I believe. Uh, I think he originally came from England. Is that right? Or well, actually, he's originally from Jamaica, I think. And Jamaica. Then, okay. But he went to England to get his undergraduate degree. Okay, so he came. He came to UK from uh, from uh, from England. Then, uh, can you tell me a little about about his research? I know something that that actually I was very fascinated when when I was an undergraduate was. Uh, the fact, I think he, he looked at optimal design of water distribution systems, which really got me interested when I went on for my master's uh, to kind of look at that. But can you tell me a little bit about uh, Dr. Charles' research? Well, the platform that, that I had developed for the uh, uh, steady state flow where we had a full set of equations, continuity and energy, and we linearized them, uh, provided a very nice platform for optimization. Okay. And so Carl really worked on, uh, um, you know, using that that approach to uh, to do optimum design and he later got his PhD and went on to teach I think at Howard University. Okay well so you were doing this research and then um, I guess at some point you made a decision to start uh, selling this software or giving these algorithms out there to folks and start having short courses uh, and the rest they kind of say is history. How, how did that all get started? What kind of made you decide to to start embarking on that path? Well, I think it was around the mid-70s that I published a paper in ASCE, Hydraulics Journal, uh, on the uh, method, the, the linearization of the, of the energy and continuity equations. And with that, I, I actually had a little Fortran code that, uh, that showed how you could set up these equations and solve the hydraulics. Well, uh, and I think we offered to provide that code to people, and th there was a quite a large response. I think at that time, water utilities in particular were uh, getting very interested in, in uh, doing a hydraulic analysis of their systems uh, using computer programs, and uh, 
this was obviously a, a technique and uh, an approach that was uh, available at the right time. And there was a lot of interest, so we just continued to develop it. All right, so did this kind of uh, sort of happen serendipitously then? It kind of evolved, I guess, to, to the uh, software kind of took off, so to speak, based on the responses you got? Well, I think based on the response, we knew that there was a big interest. Right. And uh, so we started trying to develop a little more user-friendly. We were back then carrying cards and right. punching up the data on, <laughs> on uh, card punches. but uh, uh, and, and then we started basically... Uh, offering training and uh, offering to sell the program for a small amount through the university. Uh -huh. We uh, established a software center in civil engineering and, uh, and it, just, uh, it just kept growing and growing. So uh, uh, we just got involved. We involved uh, other faculty like yourself and right. uh, that was what happened. <laughs> so what, what were some of the challenges of, of kind of uh, taking research uh, like that and, and commercializing it. I'm sure there's some some challenges that kind of popped up along the way. Can, can you share any of those? Well, a lot. I mean, you had to support, provide people with support, and uh, and that you know that was uh, in addition to any of your other responsibilities. So clearly, that was part of it. But we were generating some income for the university, so uh, uh, we used some of that income to hire a, a secretary to had to handle a lot of the paperwork and uh, and it, it was obviously a good thing we we attracted uh, a lot of engineers to uh, to our software and program okay well you mentioned that uh, you started having these these short courses how did that kind of help inform your research and, and kind of uh, improve the software that kind of feedback well uh, clearly the if you develop software like this uh, the feedback from the users is the most valuable uh, input you will get because they're the ones that are are uh, day in day in and day out using the software. So the the short courses provide a very good vehicle uh, to train people and then get feedback from them. Okay. Well, in addition just to, just to sort of normal steady state analysis, uh, obviously you've done a lot of other research related to water distribution analysis, including. Uh, network design, calibration of models, uh, slurry analysis, uh, some, some of the early water quality analysis, uh, operations with pumps and uh, other types of control systems. Uh, what, what do you see as some of your contributions in those areas? Well, there was, uh, uh, you know, we obviously uh, published a lot. Uh, you were involved in, in quite a few of these uh, uh, projects and, and uh, doing uh, uh, optimization and, and uh, doing water quality analysis. Uh, so th there was uh, just uh, the normal research uh, benefits, I think. Uh, but we were, I think this was a particularly good because we were so closely aligned with, uh, with people who were needing to do network analysis right. and providing us constant feedback. So we uh, were able to really focus on, uh, on some of the essential uh, tasks that were involved. Okay. Well, uh, you've mentioned some of my involvement. Uh, there's obviously some other very talented people that, that joined your research team. One of those was uh, Sereni Lingaretti. Uh, how did Sereni end up uh, becoming involved with, with the research? Well, uh, as a professor, as you know, we, we get letters and, and requests uh, constantly from people in, in India and, and China, and mostly very well qualified postdoctoral people that want to come over here and work, but they, but they also need financial assistance. Right. And, and, uh, and Sereni contacted us with the same sort of request. He really wanted to work on the, the water distribution. He was in doing his PhD work in that area, but he didn't ask for any financial help. And I was very impressed with that. Right. And I think that's probably the difference between uh, getting him here and not. And it was certainly a very, very uh, fortunate uh, move for the university. He was, he was outstanding as a postdoc, and then he uh, joined our faculty and was right. an outstanding professor and uh, still is very much involved in what we're doing. Okay. Uh, I noticed another person that kind of came through uh, under your mentorship was uh, a guy by the name of Paul Bulos, uh, who also got his doctorate uh, under you. Uh, 
how, how did Paul end up uh, working with you, and uh, what, were, what were some of the contributions that, that he was able to make working with you? Well, I had Paul as an undergraduate, and Paul was a very bright, enthusiastic student. I mean, extremely so. And so I recruited him as a, as a Ph.D. student. I think at the time we had a, an NSF project to, uh, to modify or to uh, enhance the equations so we could do more calculations than just pressures and flows. And, and Paul was uh, the, the principal graduate assistant on that project okay. and did his Ph.D. on that project. Okay. And I guess, as, as we know, Paul uh, went off eventually to, uh, to uh, create uh, some software of his own and uh, basically now is the head of Innovise. Uh, have you have you been surprised by the success of that company based on on your knowledge of Paul? No, I would be very surprised if they weren't successful. I think anyone who knows Paul, uh, you know, he just exudes enthusiasm, and he is obviously a very bright, energetic fellow. Okay, uh, I also noticed that uh, that uh, your your children, your three children, have also been very involved in this. This has been somewhat of a uh, of a family affair. Can you, can you tell me about some of the contributions of uh, Doug and Jana and Wendy? Right. Well, Doug, even uh, as a, I think before he even entered college, had, it was, had his Apple computer and was programming and programmed a game that was named Fantasy that was named Game of the Year. So once I started needing some uh, help with user interfaces, uh, I naturally had Doug uh, create some user interfaces for uh, for KY Pipe to enter the data more, you know, more user friendly and and uh, and it proceeded from there. He Doug has a has a master's degree in in uh, computer programming and 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 he's a, a, a very uh, talented programmer. Has created our graphical interface and many uh, uh, very impressive graphics to enhance our enhance the uh, water distribution software. Okay. Uh, Jana is a civil engineer, uh, and uh, she started working with us on support, and she's now our principal support, uh, who's currently downstairs doing a training course. And, okay. uh, uh, but she's been doing this for many years, and, and is just uh, very uh, fluent and outstanding with uh, helping our users uh, use the software. Uh, Wendy is a French uh, majored in French and is a flight attendant for Deltas, but as an as an undergraduate at UK, she did uh, work some with continuing education and Dave Blythe, which uh, we all know from uh, from UK years ago, and he trained her and uh, somewhat in continuing education. But anyhow, she she uh, handles some of our training uh, courses, sets them up, and uh, does that as a part time job. Okay. Well, looking back over uh, the, the several decades of the evolution of KY Pipe, uh, and for the benefit of, uh, I guess, other researchers out there, what, what were some of the most technically, technically challenging issues that you kind of uh, came up against as you continue to develop that software? I just wonder if you have any insights that you could share. From the standpoint of, uh, you know, doing the engineering hydraulics, we, we pretty much had a good handle on that. Uh, we created some user interfaces. Uh, probably the most uh, challenging as far as, as how our software business was doing was the development of EPA-Net. Okay. Uh, EPA-Net uh, developed a program uh, that was very, uh, ha had most of the features that we have and, uh, and distributed. It was uh, freeware. And uh, so that's, that made it very difficult from a business viewpoint okay. uh, to compete with them. But... Uh, but we still we're we're still doing very well, and uh, uh, the, you know it, it's uh, and, and EPA Net has certainly provided the engine and and uh, uh, the technology for many people to benefit. Okay, well it's it's kind of interesting. You you started out kind of a transient analysis, then the, you know a lot of success in steady state analysis with KY Pipe, uh, and, and also with Surge with some of the uh, the Surge software, but. It looks to me like over the last decade, you, you devote a little more focus back on maybe your first love transient analysis. And I'm just wondering, uh, what are some of the, the things maybe that you've uh, learned more recently in your research efforts that uh, maybe people may not be quite as familiar with? Well, I think just, I think really the biggest uh, 
the biggest accomplishment that I can claim to is, is just the, the development of the uh, wave method okay. for doing transient flow. And I, again, go back and attribute that to my little 10-minute lecture <laughs> uh, on pressure waves generated and, and uh, uh, reflected and transmitted through piping systems. And uh, that, that turned out to be a very, very good platform for handling transient flow in, in complex piping systems. Uh, as you alluded to earlier, it's, it's much more efficient. Uh, the current methods based on a, a numerical solution of partial differential equations, uh, if you have a small time increment and, and if a pipe is, uh, it takes 20 time increments for the pressure wave to go from one end to the other, they have to make 20 calculations at 20 time steps to, to handle that. and, and uh, you know, you don't need to do that. You know a pressure wave travels at a certain speed and it uh, will reach the other end at 20 time increments later. So it bypassed an enormous amount of the calculations and it also provided a much more intuitive platform. And, and I think currently when we're, we're concerned about uh, uh, pr uh, transients in large drinking water systems, right. uh, you do need this capability. Uh, the current method of characteristics methods are just... Uh, too cumbersome to handle a large water distribution system. So, uh, we're we're very pleased with uh, with our my participation. I'm very pleased with my participation in uh, in developing this and uh, making it available to uh, thousands of folks. Okay. Well, we've mentioned some of the people that uh, have kind of uh, worked with you along the way. I'm just wondering if, if I forgot anyone. Is there anyone else that you've uh, collaborated with? Uh, either uh, faculty out there or former grad students or other folks that, that you just want to highlight or, or mention? Well, I'd like to mention Bill Gilbert because okay. uh, Bill became a graduate student, started do, providing support for us back in the probably late 70s or early 80s. He just retired a, a month ago. Uh, he, uh, he's well known by many, many of our users, and uh, he just provided an awful lot of uh, good support and good feedback over a long period of time. So I certainly would, would want to recognize Bill. Okay. And obviously people like yourself who worked uh, with me for many, many years and, and contributed uh, a, a lot uh, of their own research, uh, that's, you know, that has been uh, uh, just uh, one of the uh, outstanding outcomes of this. Well, it, kind of looking back now over uh, what, what's now turned out to be an incredible career, uh, what, what kind of jumps out at you as your most significant contributions? I think certainly the, the transient analysis, the wave plan, uh, but is there anything else that, that, that maybe kind of you, you reflect back on as well? Well, just, you know, a career spent in, in uh, looking at uh, water distri or, you know, distribution systems, piping systems, uh, uh, we did a lot of research on on uh, the uh, reflection and transmission at junctions and uh, uh, just the whole gamut. So uh, nothing in nothing in particular except I think the the development of the wave method, which uh, is I think certainly uh, provides a much nicer platform for folks to look at transient flow. All right, and obviously KY pipe. So yes. I forget that. Oh yes. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we we kind of. Uh, covered a lot of territory. I'm just wondering if I've missed anything. Uh, are there any other memorable highlights of your career that, that maybe we haven't touched on or things that kind of jump out at you that you look back uh, with some a special sort of a uh, gratification over? Well, I, I have been fortunate enough to receive some very nice, uh, prestigious national awards, okay. uh, including back, uh, I got an ASEE, American Society of Engineering Award for outstanding professor in southeastern United States, a Huber Award many years ago because it's for young researchers in civil engineering, uh, Simon Fries Award, which is uh, uh, an, a very well uh, known award for ASC for hydraulics, uh -huh. and uh, just recently was named a diplomat of the uh, water resource engineering. Uh, which where there are only about 20 or 30 or so in the world. So, okay. yeah, I mean, that, that was certainly a very, very nice to get these uh, recognitions. Okay. 
Well, do you have any any other interesting stories that you'd like to share? I know now you've got uh, several grandkids. And, and, and <laughs> anything uh, particular? I know people like to talk about their grandkids. But... Well, yeah, I've got very smart grandkids, of course, and one is a, a junior at Carnegie Tech or Carnegie Mellon. I still call it Carnegie Tech, and another is a freshman at uh, the University of Kentucky, and they're both in computer engineering, and uh, so I guess it's in the genes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, well, for the benefit of uh, some of the, the new researchers that may be watching this, uh, what are some future areas of research that you think might be important to field of water distributions analysis? Well, I think almost any, any research in the, in the water distribution, water supply, uh, water quality areas are, are, I mean, water is our most valuable resource and uh, the one that we really have to uh, uh, be the most careful to preserve. So I think any any research in that area will be valuable and rewarding. Okay. Uh, and then finally, I guess, uh, what is there any general piece of advice you might give to some of these up-and-coming researchers? Maybe they're working on their PhD yeah. or they just got their PhD and they're, they're looking to launch a career into water distribution analysis. Do you have any general advice for them? I would just say work on something you have a passion for. Uh, that's always the, uh, the key to, uh, I think, a, a satisfying and uh, uh, promising career would be just to make sure that you have a passion for what you're working on.